Hey there everyone, this is Danielle playing some more Super Mario Odyssey while permanently crouching. Last time we got a bunch of the moons here in uh, Steam Gardens, we got 12 moons. However, Steam Gardens has a lot of moons to offer, so there's still a bunch more to do. And we're going to see what else we can do here, basically. Uh, this time we'll be looking for some more minor moons. Uh, we're not going to move on to the moon rock just yet. This is still going to be the A-side moons. I'm going to start by heading down into the deep woods, I think. So basically, if you come over here, rather than dying if you fall off this ledge, you will travel to another area, which is the deep woods area. Plunk. It's a little frustrating, this part of the game, in my opinion, because... There's no map, you just show up here on this question mark. You can't do a like a checkpoint warp from here. If you're anywhere in the deep woods, checkpoint warping doesn't work. Which is frustrating because you can't get out very quickly. The only way out that I know of, uh, I believe the only way out at all, is to get one of these seeds here and put it in one of these... Uh, beanstalks. There's a whole bunch of beanstalks around the deep woods and any of them you can climb up to get back to the normal area of Steam Gardens. Uh, I don't remember if we actually came down here earlier. Let me just have a quick look at the moon list and see if I can figure it out. Uh, looks like we haven't been down here yet. So yeah, there's a whole bunch of moons to be had down here. There's one here that... No, that's not moon, that's just some Goombas. Uh, there's a moon you can get by going into a certain pipe, if I can find it. Uh, I think it's just on this wall. Uh, you can go into that door by wearing a certain outfit. We don't have it yet, so we can't go in there just yet. Uh, the pipe should be just along this wall somewhere. Uh, these seeds save, unlike the other ones, other beanstalks in the game, these ones save when they're placed, so you might as well go around and place them all, just to have all the ways of exiting set up. As you can see, it's going saving when I do that. Uh, there's a timer challenge here. Basically, the deal is you have to figure out where the moon actually is, because it just shows up somewhere in the woods. I think it's this direction. Although I forget exactly. Uh, uh, I doesn't seem to have worked out. Hmm. So yeah, the, the problem is you have to I don't think it'll be too hard once we figure out where the moon is, because you basically just have to get there fast and we can just roll over there. But figuring out where the moon is is a little tricky, and there's no map, so I have trouble navigating down here. There's also no compass, as you can see, which is really frustrating. Uh, I don't know why there's a compass. Like, the lack of map sort of makes sense, because this is like a sub-area. But it's definitely a sub-area that has directions you can go, and it could have a compass. Uh, also there's a T-Rex down here. This T-Rex is dangerous. It is awake and it will attack us if we're not careful. Uh, we can capture it in order to do some stuff and we will be capturing it shortly. But uh, to do that you have to actually stun it first by making it run up into a wall or something. Uh, which is a little tricky to do. Uh, so let's try this again. Let me see. I just can't remember exactly where that is. So it just shows you where the destination is, but you have to figure out where to go to get there. Uh, I seem to remember being this direction, but... Oh, there it is. Okay. Okay, so yeah, it's just a little bit more this way. Alright. So we're going to head straight down this slope here. Hopefully without too much rolling off course. Uh... Also, watch out for that T-Rex. You can see it has a hat there. That's probably the reason you need to stun it. Because you can't put Cappy on it if it's already wearing a hat. Uh, but yeah, just make it one, run into one of these, one of these like, trees while it's charging, and that'll stun it. Or you can just drop it off the edge like that to get rid of it, but then you can't capture it, obviously. Uh, okay, so what we're going to do is roll, 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 roll. Okay, so it's... Let's try this one more time. Uh, my... My rubber band came off, I didn't put it on properly. Let me just stretch that in place. There we go, there we go. Okay. Onward. Okay, so I think we want sort of this angle, so we go up here. Uh, 
Okay, so, yeah, there it is. Oh my goodness. Um, I think if we travel on the right angle, we can actually get a straight line from where the scarecrow is to where the moon is. I think this sort of angle? Yeah, the trouble is we're going up uphill and we're rolling, so that's a bit of a problem for us, as you might expect. Okay, so there's the moon. And yeah, we can't cancel our roll because we're um, capless when we're doing a timer challenge. Ah, oh, so close. But yeah, basically we just have to climb up to that moon and grab it before the timer runs out, as usual for a timer challenge. It's just a little tricky because we can't cancel our roll once we've started. And this area is quite slopey. But I think a roll is what we want to use just so we can get there fast enough. So I think we want to try to roll above it, sort of like this. There we go. Yeah! <laughs> so that's our first moon, glowing in the deep woods. For some reason it's not called Timer Challenge. Unlike most of the Timer Challenge moons, which are called something with the name Timer Challenge. It's kind of weird. Uh, there's a few other moons down here, but they're annoying to find. Uh, there is a pipe somewhere. I think it's on this wall. Maybe if we just follow the wall along, we'll be able to get to it. Whoa, I think I accidentally did a roll cancel. <laughs> I don't really know how to roll cancel, but basically it's a thing you can do when you're rolling and you have Cappy. You can throw her and jump simultaneously, which means you keep the momentum of the roll, unlike if you just did, unlike if you did a long jump, which would set your momentum to long jump momentum, which is a bit slower than the regular rolling momentum. It's basically the deal. Uh, having some trouble with this rubber band, which is why we've been paused for a while. Uh, let me see. Uh, is that going to stay put? Well, we're crouching. So, I, I guess we're alright. Alright. <laughs> um... Again, we can't open that without buying a certain outfit. We have most of the purple coins, so we could buy the outfit, but for now we're going to just do some other stuff. Okay, so here's the pipe. What happens with this is you go in the pipe, and it gives you several other pipes to choose from. I believe this is randomized on a per-game basis, which pipe you're supposed to go in. Um, and there's no way to find out while we're crouching. If you're standing up normally, Mario will actually look at the correct pipe. Uh, which gives you a hint as to where you should be going. But, since we are crouching, Mario isn't going to do that. Because he's got his eyes closed, because he's crouching. So I think we're just going to have to guess, basically. So far we're doing fine. Uh, but when, if you make a wrong choice, it will actually reset you to the beginning of the challenge. And you have to do all the pipes again. Uh, I still try this middle one. That was it. Okay, well, we got it the first time anyway, so that was actually really easy. Ba -da -ba -da -ba. Yeah, I think they're not randomized. I think that's the same combination it was last time. Uh, so that's interesting. I did think it was randomized. Well, so that, like, each game you had to go through a different set of three pipes. But apparently not. Uh, let me see. Okay, there's another moon we can get down here by finding a certain tree, which has a pipe in it. Uh, I think it's this really big one here. Yeah, this looks like the right one. Uh, watch out for the T-Rex, obviously. There is a pipe on one side of the tree. Here it is. You head into this pipe, and they, you get one of these... Uh, sub-areas with the open the three chests puzzles. I think it's this one first? Nope. Well, now I know which one's the first one. Let's just, uh... Carefully avoid being killed by these guys, if we can manage that. Uh, if you can kill all three of them, then it'll just bring back the, pu the chests. It's usually easier just to leave the room so the chests come back instead. Uh, I've forgotten the order already. Was it that one? <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, let's just, let's just leave the room in order to reset it, rather than manually kill them all. It probably takes a little longer, but because killing them is really tricky, Probably, on the whole, faster to do it this way. In... Un at least under our restrictions. There we go. Open them in the right order, you get the moon. Because remember, those um mummy zombie things, you can't kill them by throwing Cappy at them. You have to jump on them. 
and you don't bounce off, and they all swarm around, so it's very easy to take a hit from those guys. Something to watch out for. Uh, Alright. So, that's that done. Uh, I believe we want to get the T-Rex, so we're going to get its attention here, and try to... There's a couple of different ways to stun it, actually. Uh, the most common way is probably to make it ram into one of these trees. Uh, you can also actually throw a nut at it, or a seed, from the seed robots. Uh, which will have the same effect, but I think it's easiest just to make it ram into something. Like that. And once it's stunned, you can throw Cappy on, and you're a dinosaur. Easily enough. Uh, so yeah, there's a bunch of stuff around that we want to break, basically. Uh, I think if we go across this, this edge here, we should be able to find most of it. Uh, we just want to basically walk through all of these fragile rocks in order to smash them and reveal the tasty moons hidden inside. Uh, and yeah, the robots are terrified because, I mean, it's a T-Rex. Even if it is Mario controlling the T-Rex, it's still a T-Rex. That's pretty scary. Uh, the T-Rex, as I've mentioned earlier, is the only time-limited transformation in the game. Well, I mean, the bullet bills explode after a while, but this one just kicks you out after a certain amount of time. And it's unique in that sense. Uh, so, it lasts a fairly long time, but eventually it's gonna time out and it starts, like, blinking for a second to warn you that it's timing out, and then uh, it just kicks you out and Cappy says that it's too big. Like that. Uh, so as you can see, underneath some of these rocks is actually sparkle spots, the kind that mean you have to ground pound. So, da -da 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 -da. yeah! There's a couple of moons we can get by ground pounding in the right spots. I forget how many there actually are. I think there might just be that one, but, hmm, I can't really remember. Uh, there's some purple coins up here I'm not rolling, because if I start rolling, I'm probably going to just roll off the side of this log. And that is a death pit down there. There we go. Uh, up here there's a tree with a hat spot on top of it, which is kind of strange. Uh, but this is the Mario game where you can play as random objects, so here we go. Yep, you can become this tree here and just move it out of the way. It's basically the same moon as that cactus moon. Back in um, Tostarina, the one where you capture a cactus and then move it a little bit. But with a normal tree instead. But up ba Yeah! Okay, so five moons, making good progress. Uh, I think we have most of the moons from down here. There's actually one that takes a really long time and is annoying. Uh, but we'll, have to, we'll have to do that at some point, obviously. So let's have a look around and see if we can find the stuff we need to do it. Uh, basically, that, um, that little wallet enemy, they're called coin coffers, you need to use one of those in order to get the moon. Uh, and we're going to be doing that in this video, and it takes a really, really long time because it's just, it's an annoying moon, basically. It's not hard in any way, um, it just takes a long time. You have to, have to shoot a lot of coins at a certain spot, and that takes ages. I think this is just probably the Spoombas, but just want to make sure. Oh, I can't even hit the spot. There we go. Oh, it's just coins. Okay. Uh, so, the spot you have to shoot coins at is here. You can see some coins just in the water there. Give you a hint. You can shoot this little plant here with lots and lots of coins, and eventually it will grow just like the other growing plants in the game and sprout out a moon at the top. But it takes a ridiculous number of coins to do that. Uh, I think it's like 500, maybe? And you shoot them out at, like, maybe like two per second. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. Yeah! Okay, I think that's... Okay, I think the only moons left here are the one we need the outfit for and the one we need the coin coffer for. So let's go look for that coin coffer. Um, I think it was this direction? It might have despawned. I don't know if they, they respawn like most things. Uh, yeah, here it is. So yeah, you just meant to capture the coin coffer, which is a little tricky because of the slope we're standing on here. It goes invisible too, but no big deal. There we go. Uh, when you capture it, you get a bunch of coins just for a few seconds, which is nice, but we're going to be using a lot more coins than that, so... 
Not great. Anyway, we just walk over here, we stand near this plant here, and we just keep shooting coins at it. And it just grows very slowly until we've shot, I believe it's 500 coins total at it. At which point it will sprout into a moon that we can then collect. Um, I had to look at a guide to figure out this one originally because it's just, it's really, really obscure. You can see that there's a plant there and you can see that there's some coins, but the coin coffer is invisible and even if you start shooting coins at it, this still takes forever. Um, the plant ends up very tall before it actually sprouts out a moon, but because you can climb that tree right there, it's not hard to reach. Um, also this is not affected by the crouching at all because, you know, the coin coffer is a capture and when you capture something, crouching doesn't happen anymore. So this is just the normal gameplay really. It's just the most expensive moon in the game because, you know, every other moon costs like 100 coins. This one costs 500. <laughs> I guess some of the costumes cost more, but the costumes, you know, you can, you can do different things with those and you can buy them as you play rather than just to get the moon, and all that sort of thing. And some of the costumes you can get by just scanning Amiibo as well. Not that I have any Amiibo that do that. Um, but yeah, so you just keep shooting this little plant here. It was a little plant, it's not quite a tall plant. Uh, until eventually it spits out the moon you want at the top. Uh, and you can see the plant is getting very tall. I can't actually see the top of it now. There we are. You can hear that the moon just sprout, sprouted out. So what we're going to do is just climb our way up there and grab it. So you just got to climb up the tree. There it is. See? Easy peasy. It's kind of a... strategy guide scenario, really, because there's no indication that shooting... That, like, you need to feed it coins. You can just see some coins in the water. It doesn't really give you much of a hint. Um, okay, I think we're done down here for now. There is one more moon that we can get down here, but we do need the outfit to do it, so let's, get a, let's head back up out of the deep woods for now. Say, so, let's have to climb up that beanstalk. Each of the beanstalks leads to a different spot in um, the overworld. This one, I think, might be the default one. Pops you out over here near this moon that we got earlier. Uh, the one that we were supposed to use uproots for, that we didn't use uproots for. Uh, that was fun. Oh, hey, Jam and Toad. Uh, I guess you're here because I reset the area with that, um, hint art moon earlier. Anyway, yeah, um, we've seen a jam and toad before. What you've got to do is pick the song that goes with the scene they suggest. For most of them, there are multiple songs that will work, so it's pretty easy. Uh, this one they probably want... Uh, this one. Da -da -da, da -da -da -da, the athletic theme. Well, it's called Above the Clouds in this game. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. Yeah! Okay, good for us. And yeah, the music keeps playing because this game is cute. Uh... Okay, um... Let's see here, how are we doing? 74? And that's without buying anything, right? I think so. 74 out of 100, yeah. Okay, so we're making good progress. We're still short several coins that we should have. Uh, we haven't looked over near the tower yet. I'm not sure if there'll be much to do over there yet, though. Uh, because most of the moons in that area you get on the way. And typically... You'll already have them by the time you're coming back to get extra moons. Well, you can skip them, obviously. I don't think we did, though. Uh, I guess a flower, flower road here. Uh, there's actually a slingshot here now, which takes you, I believe, all the way back to that lake down there. Oh, he's got some purple coins, too. Uh, got to be close enough to spawn them. But yeah, but they're over there. You can see them better if you don't look directly at them, which is kind of weird. 
<laughs> uh, I think we already got all the moons over here. Uh, let's have a look. Okay, yes, we didn't get the purple coins though. Uh, and there should be another moon over here, but it, it does, it, I believe, is in the moon rock, so we can't get it just yet. Uh, I'm gonna change the music back, hang on. There we go. But yeah, these are a little scary to get because of these falling platforms, but not too tricky. There we go. Uh, I think we would have already hit that. Alright, yeah, we did. And then there's this one. Just send you back down, there we go. Okay, uh, let's check the moon list. How are we doing? 45 out of 54. That's pretty good. Gotta be careful here because this is a sloped surface and you can just roll off the edge of these bridges without meaning to. Um, yeah, let's check this tower again. I think there might be some stuff we can do. Uh, let me see. So, yeah, this is an uproot based area, of course. Uh, uh, most of it's navigable without using any uproots, but there is a little bit that does need one. The moon at the top, I think, requires an uproot, because you can't gain enough height to reach it otherwise. Uh, also, there's some purple coins over there that I missed, so I might just grab an uproot to simplify things here. So yeah, the intended way to do this area is to get an uproot and start climbing on the platforms with that, since they can lift up much taller than Mario can normally climb and are accidentally uncaptured there. <laughs> uh, there's actually a cheap life up heart if you come here and hit that spot. There you go. Six hearts. Nice to have. So yeah, you're just supposed to lift yourself up this way. Uh, to damage things as an uproot, you have to jump on them, which is tricky because you can't actually jump as an uproot. You just have to stretch and then let go, basically. Uh, those purple coins I would like. Give me, give me those. No! Ah! Oh my goodness. Uh, you can notice their eyes are red normally. When you capture them, the eyes turn blue, but they have the same design. Which is a little different to how some captures work, where you just they just have Mario's eyes. Uh, it's cute though. Uh, I think we may have skipped the moon at the top here, because I remember I tried to do this without using the uproots at all. Uh, and I believe you need one to get that other moon. We did get this one with the nut there, that's pretty easy. Uh, but this top one here, I believe you need the uproot stretch to actually reach it. Yes. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. Yeah! A triple jump might work, but, you know, that's hard to do while crouching. Uh, doable, but hard. Okay, so here we are. This is where we fought one of the Brutals. I think Spew it? Yeah, it's Spew it. Uh, there's nothing to do up here just yet. There will be a moon to get up here once we open the moon rock, but at the moment, nothing. Uh, let's just hop down here. Grab these purples. Uh, most of this tower can be navigated with careful jumps and stuff without actually having to follow the intended path. You can climb up from down there onto some of these lower... Um, bars and stuff, which means you can skip the inside of the tower entirely, for example. It's hard though. Uh, but it's doable. Uh, I think there were some more purple coins here. Maybe not though. Let's have a quick look around. Yeah, I think that's all. Okay. So, yeah, that's the Sky Garden Tower. Uh, really sure where I'm trying to go at this point. <laughs> um, yeah, there'll be a moon at the top there, but we can't get it just yet, so for now, we're just gonna make our way back down. Uh, here, you, you can get onto these sides as well. You don't have to just stay on the... Yeah, you can get on the outside like this, which we can use to get over here and hit the slingshot. Oh my god. <laughs> There we go. And that'll just launch us all the way back over to 
to this pond. Uh, let me see. What are the moons made to do? Uh, I forget if it's a looking at things moon here. Uh, I think there wasn't one in this kingdom. There's some purple quades up there I should go get. <sighs> I've got most of the purple coins now. Again, there, w there are 100 here. Oh, I haven't been down here yet. Uh, this is... It's a um, kind of mini capitalist challenge. All you have to do is go into that room and kill the fire bro. Uh, it's pretty simple. Although it might be a bit trickier with our little restrictions. Or not, you know, it's pretty easy. <laughs> Yeah, then you can just get the moon. It's probably gonna be harder than killing the fibro. No, it's still easy. Yeah. And then you can go back out and get Cappy in order to continue playing the game normally. Okay, hitting Cappy here is actually definitely harder than getting the moon. <laughs> okay, there we go. And yeah, that closes back up, and we're done over here. Uh, so yeah, there's not much to that bit. It's pretty straightforward. So, let's head back up this way, see what we can see, 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 and all that we can see, see, see. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's not anything we can do in the maze yet. Again, I believe you get the deserved moon to do in there once you open the rock, but there's not really any reason to go in there before that time. Uh, let me see here. I think there were some purple coins down here, so let's just hop down and have a look. Yes. Uh, as I have mentioned before, purple coins stay collected, so you just have to get them all once. Uh, once you've already got a purple coin, it turns into a ghostly coin, sort of like the moons do. Each purple coin is worth two regular coins at that point. Uh, they don't give you any coins when you collect them the first time, so... If you want to do a yellow coinless run, you can still get all the purple coins exactly once. Uh, But once you've gotten them once, that, that's it, obviously. Um, uh, I don't want to do that yet. That's that, that's post-game. Uh, we can come back to that in a bit. Uh, the Style Sisters are here, but they don't have any moons for us this time. They're just here to hang out. <laughs> um, there's... Uh, I mean, there are two purple coins down here we can grab. There we go. Making good progress. Uh, we have most of the purple coins in this kingdom now. We can probably afford all the costumes we need. I think we only need one costume anyway, so we can definitely afford that one costume. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go buy the costume uh, and put it on, just so that we can go get the moon in the deep woods, and I think that's the deep woods finished once we've done that. Uh, oh yeah, this way will work. Yeah, I wasn't quite sure which direction I was going, but yeah, this will work. Uh, there's Jam and Tove, having a jam. Moon. <laughs> uh, the shop was back there, I went past it. So yeah, we go to the purple shop over here. Oh, we could buy... I think it's the explorer outfit we need. I think. Uh, if it's not, we can come back and get the professor outfit instead. We won't bother buying it right now because we'll have to come back to the Odyssey to change anyway. And the shop is really close to the Odyssey, so it doesn't really make a difference. Anyway, uh, Explorer Outfit equipped. Yeah! I forgot there wasn't actually a jingle when you change outfits. I kind of wish there were. Not like the moon, like, not exactly like the moon jingle, but similar. That would be cool. Okay, so yeah, we just gotta drop down this hole again. Uh, once you've put up the beanstalks, I believe several other parts of the like, above ground become warps down here instead of death pits. Which is kind of annoying, really, because it's much harder to get out of here than out of a death pit. Uh, okay, I think if we just follow along the wall here, we should be able to find what we're looking for. Yeah, there it is. So yeah, it's this spot that has a little waterfall with the door behind it. You talk to this, this robot here. And I'm an explorer, so I can go in. 
Um, unfortunately, this isn't a very interesting room. Some of the costume rooms are a lot more exciting. This one is just a treasure chest with a moon in it. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. Yeah! Which is, you know, it's fun to get. It's, it's, a, it's fine to get a moon that way. Nothing wrong with that. It's just some of the costume rooms have an actual, like, full-blown full, full blown sub area to go into. And it's a lot more fun than not doing a whole lot of anything. Uh, for example, the one in Metro Kingdom has, like, two full moons and all sorts of stuff going on. And it's it's fun. I, I think it's, like, like, an athletic sort of thing with swing poles. That might be a different one. There's definitely one like that in the Metro Kingdom. Which we'll be saying later, of course. Uh. Okay, how are we doing numbers-wise? Let's see. 48 out of 54? That's pretty good. Uh, I forget whether the tourist comes here. I mean, they might, but I don't, I don't remember. Uh, I might just check with Torkatu and see what it is that's left over, because I think we're getting pretty close to covering all the moons on the A side here. We did do the hint art here, so that's not left out of the count. Uh, Torkatu's just over here. There you go. Uh, we should be able to do... The, I don't think we've done the race yet. Rolling rock in the woods. Oh, right. Um, yeah, one of those rocks that glow when you start kicking them around is in the deep woods. So we do have to go down there and find that one and do it. Uh, but first I'm going to do the race because the deep woods is annoying and I want to do something different before going down there again. If the race is activated, I think it should be because we are in the post, like the properly story completed version of the kingdom. Yep, there's the racer. So yeah, the race here, basically you have to go to where the first story moon was. So you have to basically do that little maze skip to get there fast enough, but the maze skip is very easy. Um, you start basically where we were, see, so same spot, and yeah, it's exactly the same spot as where the first story moon is. So all you gotta do is just get down there as fast as possible. I have no idea why they're all going that way instead of obviously jumping off the edge, which is way faster. Even with that, like, stun time. Traveling far fewer distances. Uh, then you gotta just climb up here. This part isn't too tricky. But I'm screwing it up, so we may have some trouble. But we're doing a skip that they don't do shortly, so it should be fine. <laughs> I believe I believe they all go through the maze for some reason. I don't know why. Because they shouldn't. It's a terrible idea. Okay, they're going into the maze after capturing... Well, pseudo capturing one of those guys anyway. Uh, all we gotta do is just jump over here. And we're good. So, yeah, that, that's not hard. Um, it's a little harder while permanently crouching which, because we lose a little bit of control. Um, but, as you can see, we're still way, way ahead of the Red Cooper. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. Yeah! Okay, how are we doing? That's 50... No, it's 49. Okay. Uh, there's the rolling rock they just mentioned. There's also a, a secret path to this kingdom, which is accessed a bit later in the game. So you won't be doing that right now. Uh, we'll do the rolling rock right now, though. Let's just jump down here again. I think that's everything in the deep woods now. I really hope it is, because deep woods are annoying. Alright, uh, so what we want to do is get basically to the edge. The one, the one with that, um, log just sort of teetering. Oh, hello. Hang on. We haven't done this yet. Here's a rock you can just become for some reason. Who knows? This game is weird. It's great, though. Uh, and there's just, yeah, small purple coins under there. Uh, you can just walk through here, but, you know, you can also roll and bonk if you want. That's an option. Bonking is, is always permitted. Never fear. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, yeah, I think if we just head this way, we should get to the right spot. Uh, let's keep rolling. Okay, yeah, so the rock is along this, this, um, ledge here at the edge of the... It's this one, I think. Yes. So, yeah, we just gotta knock that around until it breaks, and we'll get the moon out. Boop. 
Thankfully, you don't have to like you don't have to grab it. You can, but just whacking it with Cappy or just kicking it around, and, like anything you do to this rock will damage it, and you just have to do a lot of damage to it. Oops. Oh right, I forgot that the T-Rex could actually get up there. I was trying to get, just go up there to dodge it, but no, no, that doesn't work. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. Yeah. All right. So what are our numbers at? 50 out of 54. So one of those is. Oh, hang on. Rolling rock in the woods, not the deep woods. Okay. So there's another rolling rock we have to do, actually. Which we also haven't done. And that one is just in the regular area. So we're going to do that now. Uh, once we've made our way to one of the beanstalks. This one will do. Let's climb back up. So yeah, all we got to do... Where are we going to spawn? Oh, cool. This is actually really close to where the Rolling Rock is. Uh, the Rolling Rock is just out here in the front area of the kingdom, before you've gone into the real steamy bits of Steam Gardens. It's one of these rocks. I think it's that one? Yes. So yeah, we just gotta kick this around. There's actually no threats in this area of the game, so... Unlike the T-Rex one, this one's a lot easier to deal with. <laughs> I believe speedrunners actually use this rock to hit the rabbit more easily, which is an interesting trick. Uh, I don't really know how that works. I guess it's just Mario's hitbox is a bit bigger because he's holding a rock. Uh, there we go. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. Yeah! Okay, 51 and 54. Plus the secret path, which we haven't done yet. Uh, plus... Uh, let me think. What else? What else haven't we done yet? Let's talk to Talkatu and see what Talkatu says. Uh, there shouldn't be a whole lot left to do, basically. Uh, this, this video should wrap up the A side of this kingdom. Um, so the secret path plus two more moons, I think. Yes, so one of them is going to be in the next video. It's technically part of the B side. You, you can just get it without opening the moon rock. Swing around secret plower field. Oh, is that available already? Okay, that one is up here. Uh, we're grabbing that now, and that's going to be a video, um, because that's all of the minor moons we can gather, basically. Um, let me think. Yeah, that's right. In the next video, we'll be grabbing the post-game moons from this area. So yeah, swing around Secret Flower Field, all you have to do is come up here. Uh, there's a pole here now. You had to use the 2D area to get up there earlier, but now the pole is here, so we can just do it this way. Basically all you do, you climb up here. Uh, you can see there's a keyhole there. So we're going to have to unlock that by finding the key somewhere. I happen to know where it is already, so we'll be going there in a second. Uh, there's a bunch of hidden coins up here, so if you wanted a bunch of hidden coins, you can come up here. Uh, but where we're actually trying to go is around here. I think I could probably have made the jump around there instead of actually climbing up. Hmm. Uh, but yeah, you basically want to just swing on these poles and things. Oop. Uh, and not do that, because it's not lethal, but it's a little annoying. Okay, let's walk back up the secret flower field entrance. So yeah, basically you have to swing on those little poles there, and directly behind where you enter the secret flower field, there is a key that you can grab, and then you can take a flower path to get back up. I don't think you have to abandon Cappy at any point in this, so it shouldn't be too tricky. Yeah, you can just do that to get over here. There, so you grab the key, the moon pops out up there, I did think that one was inside the moon rock, but apparently it's not, which is kind of surprising. Uh, then there's just this flower path you can use to get back up. You can't use a warp to get back up there because warping uh, resets a bunch of stuff, including which keys you've collected. Uh, but it's not actually hard, the flower path is easy. Yeah! Okay, so there's two more moons. Uh, we'll be getting one of them in the next video. The other one is the secret path, which we'll have to get later on in the game. Uh, but apart from that, this kingdom is A-side complete, so that's pretty exciting. Uh, 
So we're just going to make our way over to the Odyssey and cash in these moons. And then we're going to be done for this video. So, making good progress. We got a bunch of moons today. Uh, that's, let me say, 15? Yeah, 15 moons. And we've nearly finished Steam Gardens, which is quite exciting. Uh, I mean, we've nearly finished the A side of Steam Gardens. There's still B sides to do. And some of the B side stuff in this kingdom is hard. Uh, we'll see how we go. So, yeah, cashing in these 15 moons. There we go. 342 moons total. Pretty good. Uh, I might just check the shop and see if they've added the items I'm looking for yet. I have a feeling they haven't, but no, no harm in having a look. Uh, let me see. Okay, not yet. Uh, yeah, there's a whole bunch of different outfits for playing, for like, dressing up as different characters, which is pretty cool. Uh, but anyway, uh, so yeah, we've in this video, we've finished off the A-side of Steam Gardens, with one exception, which is the Secret Path. Uh, in the next video, we will be doing the B-side, possibly all in one video, possibly in two, because this being a big kingdom, it has quite a bit of B-side stuff to do. Uh, we'll see how we go. In any case, thanks for watching!